sometimes people get tremendous pain. They go to the ER, oh, belly pain. They do a sonogram and they see stones, rocks in the urinary system. Can you explain that in a little bit more detail? Yes. Stones are very prevalent. And there is, usually in the United States, there is something which is called the stone belt, which is the area of the south that has a lot of sun. And sun, as we know, stimulates the vitamin D, converts vitamin D1 into vitamin D3. It stimulates the absorption and excretion of calcium. And these people will form calcium oxalate stones. Also, what happens is that when people get dehydrated, they do not drink. They get a concentration and precipitation of a lot of salts, which one of them is calcium, the other one is usually oxalate. And usually this stuff, by concentrating and precipitating, they produce something which is called nucleation. It starts forming a little tiny nidus. This nidus will keep on growing and growing as more of these substances, which are salts basically, get adherent to this little tiny nidus until they get to a certain point and they try to pass. If the stones try to pass and it's going to block the ureter, which is the tube that goes between the kidney and the bladder, that gives you excruciating pain. It's claimed to say that those people that get the pain, it's worse than labor pain. Even though that we say that labor pain is a lot, but we see it in women when they have a renal colic, which is the term for somebody trying to pass a stone. Most of the time, stones up to approximately about 5 millimeters will pass. How long does it take? Studies have shown that it takes between 5 to 50 days to pass a stone, depending on where it's located. If a stone gets stuck in one place over two weeks, it should be manipulated. You should do something over there to jiggle it, to move it, by cystoscopy, by doing a ureteroscopy, which means to put a little tiny tube with the light and a camera going up the tube over there and jiggling it. You can break it up with a laser. You can break it up with any kind of instrument and try to remove it. After two weeks, they usually have a tendency of the lining of the ureter to grow over it and clog up, and then the kidney starts getting distended. When the kidney gets distended, after a while, the pain goes away. So the fact that somebody has pain-free, but they have not passed the stone, that means that they're out of danger, unless they, have, they can prove that the stone has passed. So if you get stuck somewhere, you can end up with an indolent destruction of your kidney because of a blockage. So the basic rule is if you made the diagnosis, you should have a follow-up study to make sure that what you just said is right. in the problem? The best study for stones today is usually a non-contrast CAT scan of the abdomen and pelvis. That's going to show the stone. When you go to the emergency room because you have nausea and vomiting and excruciating flank pain that comes anterior to the belly, it goes down to the groin, it goes to the testicle, it goes to the vagina in the women, or it goes to the labia in the women, that usually is a kidney stone. The pain is excruciating, it comes and goes. The reason why it comes and goes is because the ureter will contract and will stop contracting, and when it stops contracting, the pain goes away, and then the stone is usually not completely symmetrical. It's not like a bull valve, but it's irregular and has a little bit of ragged edges. So the urine can get by. Whenever the urine gets by, then usually the pain subsides. When it gets clogged again, then the pain goes back in. So whenever you have the pain, you go to the emergency room, you go to your doctor, you're going to have a CAT scan of the abdomen and pelvis without contrast. And that's going to show the stone and it's going to tell you the level of degree of obstruction.